Hi everyone, my name is Amy Collins and I am here with Elena Upton and I am hosting Elena today at a webinar that she has very generously put together about improving your digestion, homeopathy to the rescue. How are you tonight, Elena? I'm great. How are you, Amy? I'm good, thank you. Where are you calling in from tonight? I'm calling in from Santa Monica, California. I'm looking over the beautiful ocean here. Now, Santa Monica, Santa Monica, that is near, not exactly in, but near where you founded the Holistic Resource Center, correct? Yes, the Holistic Resource Center was just north of here, about 20 miles. Guys, Elena has, besides being a, uh, a very successful author and teacher on homeopathy, she has been training and practicing for over 25 years. She's a graduate of the Hahnemann College of Homeopathy. She went to the Curentry University. In addition, she has taken a number of courses and uh, taken a two-year master clinician course with Dr. Lewis Klein. And she has more than a decade of seminar and interactive class experience with her, all with acclaimed medically trained homeopaths from around the world. Before we move on, and Elena, she's going to talk a lot about digestive issues and homeopathy, I just wanted to let you guys know that this particular expert, I host a lot of experts over the years, on, and I, I host a lot of different classes, but Elena's wealth of knowledge and the amount of information she's about to give you is fantastic. She and I ran through this class a few days ago, so I would strongly recommend that you, you take out a pad and paper, you've got perhaps a pen or a pencil with you, put, put down your phone, let go of Facebook, just pay attention. Elena, and a lot of what she's going to teach you is available in her books and in her classes, but as she moves forward and moves through this class on digestive issues, there's going to be so many questions that you guys have, so much information that she has generously allowed me to post this as a replay. So as of two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, anything that you guys wanna watch again, we're going to put up at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon Eastern, and we're going to allow it to stay up through the weekend. So as you're going through anything that you guys find interesting that you wanna watch again, she's gonna make it available for a replay. This session is completely complimentary. All the replays will be made available complimentary and they are being made available by the publisher of Elena's series of books. Her flagship book, The Alternative, just came out last month. She has several books out that we will tell you about at the end. But with that, Elena, I just again wanna welcome you and thank you so much for giving us so much time this evening. Thank you, Amy. I really appreciate it. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I just want to say that um, I want to thank those who are tuning in and those who are making an effort towards improving their health. And I'm happy to be of assistance in any way I can. For those of you who are watching, I want to remind you all that the information that Elena is presenting is an informational presentation. This is not a substitute for medical care. Under no circumstances are we saying to take this in place of medical care. Seek the, the advice of a professional, a, a medical professional whenever necessary. As with all classes that you take and all information, I would like you guys to please be discerning and to understand that you have options. This information, this path that Elena has taken me on has been so incredibly helpful but I always take it in and I always take a look and take myself to a medical professional when necessary. And I always take a look at all my options. So with that, Elena, why don't you take us away? Okay, thank you so much, Amy. So as Amy said, we're gonna talk about digestion this evening and how you can treat digestive issues naturally and efficiently with homeopathy. And we'll talk about who this course is for, what you will learn, and what are the ultimate benefits of bringing homeopathy into your life. But before we go any further, I'd like you to take a look at this illustration on this page. And the reason I put this illustration here and why I wanna talk about it is because I don't wanna take for granted that everyone listening even knows what homeopathy is, or that has ever even seen a homeopathic remedy. Many people have not, and that's fine. Most people are, are um, familiar with supplements, they're familiar with herbs, with um, flower essences, many different forms of 
alternative medicine, but not homeopathy. So if you walked into a health food store and you were looking for homeopathic remedy, this is what it would look like. It would be in a vial that looks like this, or at least 95% of what you would find on the market today. So for example, the chain Whole Foods, this is the remedies that they sell is by Boron. And they look like this in these tubes. And as you can see, it has a transparent cap on it. And the, that's the other reason why I want to talk about this illustration is because I'd just like to mention, all, again, for those people who are not familiar with homeopathy, that it's taken in a very different way than any other kind of medicine, any other kind of supplement. The reason there's a transparent cap is because to actually get the remedy out of this vial, you would turn this vial over, you'd flip it so that that transparent cap is on the bottom, you would twist it, and every time you twist it, a pellet will come out, and it's a little white sugar pellet. Those sugar pellets are actually the carrier for the medicine. When the medicine is manufactured, it's actually a liquid and it's sprayed on those pellets. So you would twist that cap, and if you were going to take four pellets as one dose, you would twist it four times, you'd see four in the cap. Now, if five happened to drop down, that really isn't a problem. And we'll talk about that when we get into dosage and potency, et cetera, and why it isn't an issue and why you have to have exactly a specific dosage or not. But you would then gently remove that cap and you would toss those pellets directly into your mouth. You don't want to put them in your hand. You may contaminate them. And as I mentioned, the medicine is actually sprayed on that carrier. So you really don't want to get the medicine on your hands. You just want to toss it directly into your mouth. So now that we've had those instructions, let's move on. So who is this course for? It's really for anyone who's looking to improve their health. Anyone can use homeopathic remedies, including babies and the elderly. Anyone looking to understand homeopathy and holistic medicine. So if you haven't had an opportunity yet to dive into this, or you really didn't know where to look for the information, this is a good place for you to start this evening. So thank you for joining us. This course is for anyone who's trained in other areas of healthcare, and maybe you're looking to add something else to your bag of tricks, that maybe this is an introduction for you into homeopathy to see how it could help your clients. This course is for anyone, anyone who's looking for a safe, inexpensive, efficient means of healthcare. That tube of pellets that you saw on that previous slide Average for $7.50 in most stores and online you can find them for even less than that. That's how inexpensive homeopathy is to bring into your life. And last but not least, this course is for anyone looking to break the cycle of drug treatment, if that in fact is what you're looking to do at this time in your life. So let's talk about what you'll learn this evening. I'm going to talk about specifically what homeopathic medicine is before we actually talk about remedies for digestion, because there are so many misnomers about homeopathy. I want to clear that all up. We'll talk about dosage and potency and length of treatment. I know this all sounds very complicated, but trust me, you'll see that it's not. If I could learn it, you can learn it. And then we'll get into the meat of the topic, which is why your digestion is maybe disturbed in the first place. And then we'll talk about some very specific remedies for digestive health and also some protocols for helping to fix your digestive issues. And we'll discuss keeping records and why that's important. And then, of course, as Amy mentioned previously, Know when to seek professional help. We don't want you to be self-diagnosing and self-treating unnecessarily. So what would be the benefits of learning homeopathic medicine? Well, obviously, the more information you have, the more informed you, have, you are, the more you can take control of your life. You have, you have options now. You would have the benefit of gaining a better understanding of treating symptoms versus diagnosis. And you're probably thinking, well, what does that mean? We'll get into that when I, when I talk more about exactly what homeopathy is and what it sets it apart from other types of medicine. You'll have the benefit of actually being able to uproot and fix situations rather than just suppressing them with a drug. You'll be able to treat symptoms quickly and easily with inexpensive FDA-approved medicines. And 
homeopathy is an FDA approved medicine and has been for well over 100 years. You will save money on doctor's visits and prescriptions. If you can treat yourself minor conditions, common conditions on a regular basis, imagine what that will do to change your life and that of your family. And again, if you're looking to step off of the drug cycle, this may be a place for you to start. So what is homeopathy? It may be the missing piece of the health puzzle for you and your life. Homeopathy is actually the second largest system of medicine in the world. And this isn't a statistic that we created ourselves to boast about homeopathy. This is actually a statistic that comes from the World Health Organization. Homeopathy was developed by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann in Germany in the late 1700s. So you can see homeopathy is over 230 years old. And there are over 4,000 remedies to date. Over 500 million people every year receive homeopathic treatment. I know that seems astounding, but again, it's the second largest system of medicine all over the world except in America. There are over 5,000 French physicians alone that prescribe homeopathy. The royal family has used homeopathy in England since the 1930s. Maybe that's why the queen mother is, is doing so well at the age that she is. There are over 100 homeopathic medical schools in India. That means they have traditional medical training, but then they, do, they use the homeopathic materia medica and repertory books to actually decide remedies and treat their patients. Like I said, there's over 4,000 remedies and there's a remedy for everything. And in Germany, over 25% of the family physicians use homeopathy. So you can see this is not a fad. This is not the new latest greatest coming down the pike. This is a real system of medicine that's been rooted around the world for a very long time. So let's talk about what sets homeopathy apart because there are two main differences of why homeopathy is very different than any other system of medicine. So the first difference has to do with preparation, the preparation technique of the remedies. And we use words like dilution and potentization. I know they're very strange words, but it's a language that comes from a time from a very long time ago, and we still use these words. So when we talk about potencies, we have two different potencies in homeopathy that are most widely known, and those are X potencies and C potencies. And the only difference has to do with their dilution. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because this isn't really the information that you really want or need. I know you just want to get to what the remedies are, but I just wanted to give you a basis for understanding of why homeopathy is different. So we have these two different dilutions. You would take a mother tincture and dilute it one part of the mother tincture into nine parts alcohol and water, and that's your first dilution. And you succuss it or triturate it or agitate it, which exaggerates the life force of the original substance you started with. And you do those dilutions over and over to get to the potency that you're looking to do. And if you wanted an X potency, it would be a 1 in 9 ratio. And if you wanted a C potency, it's a 1 in 99 ratio. So that's the difference when you go into a store and you buy a 6 potency versus a C potency. So understand that each time a remedy is diluted, it becomes less harmful. And I'm saying harmful because we do use some poisonous substances. Homeopathic remedies are made from plant, animal, or mineral substances. So some plants are poisonous. We use snake venoms. We use lots of amazing things from nature that actually help us in our everyday life. So understand that it becomes less harmful every time you dilute it, but it also becomes more powerful. And in science, this is calculated as parts per million. You probably remember not too long ago that in Michigan, the water supply was uh, polluted with lead. And they kept talking about parts per million. How many parts per million of lead would it, does it take for it to then become safe? Well, it's the same in homeopathy, which is why we keep diluting and diluting. So homeopathy actually uses the opposite concept of conventional medicine. Rather than using a maximum dose to obtain results, in homeopathy, we actually use the smallest dose. 
because homeopathic remedies are actually information. We think of them as information rather than medicine. So when that pellet that we talked about, that sugar pellet, you toss that into your mouth, and you don't want to just crunch it up and swallow it immediately. You actually hold it in your mouth and let it melt, especially if you put it under your tongue, because the most direct route to your brain is when something is placed under your tongue and that information crosses the blood-brain barrier. So let's look at key difference number two, which I call individualization. So in homeopathy, we actually treat the person, not the illness. I'll have patients come in, they'll sit down in front of me, and they'll tell me the things that they've been diagnosed with. And I'll say to them, okay, that's fine. Now tell me how you feel. I want to know your symptoms. I want to know your history. We take a case in a very different way than a medical doctor does. Uh, you are a whole. You were born a whole person. So when you get sick, your body reacts as a whole. So if you have a cold, and that cold has gone to your chest, it's not just your chest that is part of this picture of that cold. Maybe you're irritable. Maybe you're chilled. Maybe you're thirsty. There are all these things are coming from other parts of your body so that we gather all of these symptoms and all from all of the different parts of your body, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And that's how we decide which remedy you need. So that's why I say that homeopathy, homeopathy is individualization. So let's talk a little bit about potency, dose, and length of treatment. We'll start with potency. We talked about X potencies and C potencies. So what I want to say is that you really don't have to worry about any of that tonight. I just introduced that because it's valuable to have a background into whatever it is that you're using. But for the specific protocols and the remedies that I'm talking about here, I've actually given you the potencies that work, have shown to work the best over time and they yield the best results. So you don't even really have to put a lot of thought into that at this time. Having said that though, use whatever potencies you can find. So if I'm saying that you should use a I'm suggesting that you use a remedy in 30C or 200C or 12X and you can't find it. Just use whatever it is that you can find. It'll still work. So dosage. So how much would you take? So a typical adult dosage is four pellets. But as I mentioned earlier, if, only, if five pellets dropped into that cap, it doesn't matter. You could take five, four or five pellets. For a child, you would dispense two pellets. For an animal, one to two pellets. And I know you're thinking animals. Yes, you can actually treat animals very successfully with homeopathy. As a matter of fact, I had a cat who lived to be 23 years old. I called her my homeopathic cat. She really only never went to a vet, except one time she got into a tussle with a neighbor's cat across the street, and she had to be sewed up a little bit. And that was the only time. But other than that, whenever she needed a remedy, I took a pellet or two and I dropped them in her water bowl. Now with dogs, it's actually even easier because they'll lick them right off your hand. Try to get a cat to do that though, no way. So for chronic um, digestive issues that we'll be talking about tonight, you would actually take two doses per day is what I recommend most of the time for most situations. And then let's talk about SOS dosage. So SOS means that you can repeat a remedy as often as every 15 minutes, up to three doses. So let's say you went to a restaurant, you, on the way home, you already have signs in your tummy that you've gotten food poisoning, and this is a problem, and you're running indoors by the time you get to the house to run to the bathroom, and now you really know you have food poisoning. You can grab for the remedy that I'm going to tell you about for food poisoning, and you can take a dose. As you're sitting on the pot, you can take another dose. Fifteen minutes later, you can take a third dose. By the time you're taking that third dose, your symptoms are already, already being relieved. So let's look at length of treatment. So for acute conditions, you only need to take the remedy until the situation is resolved. 
So in that particular situation where I'm talking about food poisoning, you would only take the remedy until those stomach pains or diarrhea or whatever are gone. Now for chronic conditions, usually we'd take the remedies twice a day and you would take it for six to eight weeks, maybe 10 to 12 weeks, depending how chronic your situation is. So let's get into why your digestion may be disturbed in the first place. So maybe it's poor diet. And poor diet doesn't necessarily have to mean that you eat junk food. Um, and I put here vegetarian or vegan, not because I'm critical of either of those diets. You have the right to choose any type of diet you would like to follow. But, but be sure to follow it in a way that makes sense. And the reason I actually put this here is because over the years, I've had a number of patients who have come and sat in front of me and I've asked them what their diet looks like. And when they tell me their diet, I realize they eat so much packaged food or they eat so many carbs or there's just too much of something because they've taken out a big group of foods. So unfortunately, they've gotten replaced with not necessarily a balanced diet. So that's why I'm just asking you to take a look at that. Maybe you have a fairly good diet, but you're, un you're unaware of food sensitivities. Those food sensitivities could be dairy, that maybe you're not making the connection that every time you have cheese or other dairy foods that you have digestive issues in that you're constipated or you're gassy or whatever it is. Maybe it's gluten. Maybe you haven't made the connection that whenever you have breads or foods that have a lot of gluten in them that you have an issue. So just take a look at what that is in your diet that may be causing those issues. You may find a connection. Maybe you're having digestive issues because your gut is too acidic. So you've probably heard a lot about acid versus alkaline. What that means is your pH is too low if you have an acidic gut, which means your body really can't function if it's, under, if it's below seven. So 7.0 to 7.3 is actually neutral, and that's really where you want your pH or potential of hydrogen to be. So it's easy enough for you to chart that because you can go to a health food store or a pharmacy and you can buy pH papers or some of them look like matchsticks that come in a little package depending on the manufacturer and you just peel one off and you put it in your mouth and get some saliva on it and then it only takes a few seconds you can take that and hold it up to the package that you bought because the package will have on it a chart a colored chart and as the color of that strip is changing, you can measure it to the numbers on that package. And you'd be able to chart your pH every day to see if you're acidic or if you're too alkaline. But most people are in the too acidic range, below seven. So if you're 6.5 and you're thinking, well, that's not very far off from seven, actually it is. Because every one of those points is actually 10 points. And the easiest way to fix that is to drink lemon water first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And you're probably thinking, well, but lemons are acidic. I'm trying to reverse this. They're actually not. Lemons become alkaline as soon as you take them in and they reach your gut. Now it's an alkaline solution and it can help to raise your pH. And the other way to do that is apple cider vinegar. You can take a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And I know, Amy, you're probably cringing if you're hearing <laughs> the idea of drinking apple cider vinegar diluted in water. But it's not horrible. You can get used to it. And that can help to raise your pH. And your gut in general, will, your whole body will operate better once you get your pH level up. So maybe your gut is disturbed because you've used a lot of antibiotics in the past. Some people come in and say to me, well, I haven't had an antibiotic in 10 years. And I'll ask them, well, did you have many antibiotics as a child? Well, I don't know, except I did have tonsillitis or I did have ear problems and I had tubes in my ears. And I can guarantee you had lots of antibiotics as a child if you had any of those issues. 
So even though it was a long time ago, if you're having dis gut issues now, it's a result of your gut being disturbed all those years ago. So now it's time to go in and repair that. And then there are other factors that cause digestive issues. You may have pathogens such as parasites or a fungal infection or a bacterial infection. Most people have no idea if they're walking around with H. pylori or um, other bacterial infections in their gut. So it may be any of these reasons or a combination of these reasons that your gut chemistry has been disturbed because your gut is nothing more than a chemistry lab. And every time you take a drug or every time you've had food poisoning or any time you've ingested anything that's upset your stomach, it's that chemistry lab that's been disturbed. Okay, I put in this chart here because I wanted you to see that this is the way I laid out a number of remedies in my book so that you could look up a particular topic and you could see readily within just a few seconds the remedies and their symptoms that go with them. And of course, that chapter would have accompanying information about those particular remedies so that you could further decide from one to another. And of course, being this class is on digestion, I chose to put the digestion chart in here. So let's talk about some individual remedies. I'm gonna talk about my five favorite homeopathic remedies for digestive issues. And I would say that 80% of the population can benefit from just these five remedies. So that's where we're gonna to start tonight. And the first remedy is arsenicum album. And my favorite potencies for arsenicum album is either 6C or a 200C. And here's the list of actually just some of the issues that our Senecum album will cover. It's my number one remedy for food poisoning. And it's great for acid reflux. If you have any kind of pain that tends to be a burning pain, that happens to be a key word for a key element in our Senecum is any kind of burning pain. If you have constipation and it looks like rabbit pellets, you know, those dark little tiny round stools, <laughs> arsenicum would be a good remedy for you. If you have hemorrhoids and those hemorrhoids are relieved by heat by getting into a, a, a warm bath, that's another keynote of this particular remedy. Now you don't have to have all of these symptoms to need arsenicum album. You maybe only have one. So for example, if you got food poisoning and you have only one of these other symptoms with um, the burning pains being one of them, you would utilize the arsenicum album. Let's move on to the next remedy. My next favorite remedy is carbo vegetabilis. We just call it carbo veg. And my favorite potency for carbo veg is a 30C. And this is a great remedy for anyone who's had any kind of med medicine or any kind of issue that's disturbed your gut and you've never felt well since that symptom. Well, you may need to take Carbo Veg twice a day for a few days or even a few weeks, and you'll see that your gut will start to get back to a much more normal rhythm, rhythm and you'll feel better. Or if you're that person who gets really bloated after a meal, you know, you see guys walking around with these big bloated tummies, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that bad, but for people who get this kind of distension after they eat, especially after you eat fats and dairy products, carbo veg is the remedy. So you would take it right after you eat as soon as these symptoms start to come on. And you can repeat it two or three times and you'll have relief. So if you have a lot of flatulence or belching or slow digestion, you feel like you have a rock in your tummy after you eat, just take a dose of carbo veg and it will just move everything on. It'll just get that process going. Or for people who wake up with nausea in the morning, this is a good remedy for them. Or if you have burning in your stomach extended to your spine. And I know I mentioned that for the previous remedy, Arsenicum album, that burning was a keynote, 
this is different, this type of burning. This is very specific. It's burning in the stomach. And of course, your stomach is right underneath your breastplate there. It's high up. It's not lower where your abdomen is. It's burning high in your stomach. But you find that it extends around the back to your spine. That's a carbo-veg symptom. Or also, if your distress doesn't come on until at least half an hour after you eat or an hour after you eat, then carbo-veg would also be the remedy for that symptom. Lycopodium. Lycopodium is actually a remedy that has a great liver aspect to it. It's for people with weak digestion, with bloating, and people who eat just a small amount of food and they feel full. Um, people who belch a lot. If you've been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, lycopodium is a great remedy for you. And when we move on and I show you some protocols, you'll see lycopodium added to another remedy. That's a great combination as a protocol. If you're better from warm drinks, or if you're worse from eating bread or fermented foods, then lycopodium is a great remedy for you. Or if you alternate with diarrhea and constipation. So you can see why I'm not talking about specific diseases, I'm talking about symptoms. And that's what I had mentioned very early on in one of the slides, that we'll talk about symptoms versus disease. And that's how we choose a remedy in homeopathy, is we throw out those disease names, and we instead look at the person, the whole person, we take into account their symptoms, and then we find the remedy that matches those symptoms. So moving on here, Nux Vomica. This is a fantastic remedy. And let me tell you, it's a fantastic remedy for hangovers. <laughs> in fact, when my son was in college, he had a debate, he was in a debate class, and he decided he would debate homeopathy versus conventional medicine, and he used Nux Vomica as an example. And he explained why Nux Vomica was such an amazing hangover remedy, and how he could take a dose before he started drinking for the evening, and how he would take at least one or two doses before he went to bed, and he would be fine when he woke up the next morning. So then he told me that after class, so many kids ran out to the local health food store to buy Nux Vomica that the store actually ran out. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but Nux Vomica is also a great remedy for hiccups. I had someone who texted me not too long ago. She was at the hospital visiting her brother. And she said that one of the drugs they had given him had caused hiccups. And did I know something to stop it? And I said, yeah, give him some Nux Vomica. And she said within 15, 20 minutes, the hiccups stopped. So it does work. This is a great remedy if you have lots of flatulence and heartburn. If you feel like you want to vomit after a meal, you've eaten too much, you've taken way too many slices of pizza or whatever it is, way too many glasses of wine, this is your remedy. It's also a good remedy for constipation or if you feel like um, your movement was incomplete, but it also has diarrhea, but um, it's a different kind of a diarrhea. This is that diarrhea that has that constant uneasiness where you, you feel like you have to go, which is why I have IBS listed here in SIBO because that tends to be a symptom of IBS. So moving along here to chelidonium, my favorite potency for chelidonium is 30C. Chelidonium is a specific gallbladder remedy. It's liver gallbladder. Lycopodium is more liver. Chelidonium has more action on the gallbladder. And you, this is the remedy where you might have some nausea and vomiting. It's a remedy for jaundice. So I have used this remedy on two occasions for two of my five grandchildren were actually born with jaundice because their moms needed Pitocin to move along their delivery. And they were born with jaundice. 
So before the doctors wanted to put them under lights and do all kinds of other things, I said, mm, I just, I'll just give them a little bit of chelidonium. I took one pellet, diluted it in water, used a dropper, put a couple of drops in their mouth. It's amazing. Within 24 hours, their skin was better. That first movement wasn't yellow. It was the color was changing. Another dose the next day. In 48 hours, the jaundice was gone. That's how quickly a remedy like this can work. It's a remedy for that strange pain that you get on an inferior angle under your right scapula. That's your gallbladder that's screaming at you. And this is an amazing remedy to shut off that pain pretty quickly. If you have gastric pain or if you've been diagnosed with gallstones, and I put berberis there, which is the name of another remedy, because you could actually combine chelidonium and berberis to help to start to break down gallstones. It's a great remedy if you have edema, swelling around your ankles or your feet. I had someone just recently who came back from India. It was a really long flight that she took and her ankles were all swollen. And I said, well, because your liver gallbladder is not happy. Let's get it draining. So I put her on chelidonium 30C twice a day. And after three days, that was the end of it. It was gone. And she's flown several times since then, and it hasn't returned. It's also a great remedy for heel pain. When people start to get that horrible pain in their heels, especially the right one. This is how specific homeopathy is, that you'll feel the pain more in your right hip because your liver gallbladder is on the right side of your body. But chelidonium would be a great remedy to relieve that symptom. So let's look at some remedies for food intolerances. Let's start with dairy. Athusa, 200C. Now, Athusa is not a common remedy. These first five remedies that we talked about, you can walk into any whole foods or health food store and you're going to find those five remedies. They're very basic remedies that everyone sells. Athusa, not so much. This is an unusual remedy and you'll have to search it online. And again, later I'll tell you where to go find these remedies uh, or you can special order it from homeopathic manufacturers. But this is a great remedy if you have sensitivity to dairy products. So you could take a dose of this remedy twice a day, and you would have to take it for many months. Taking it for just a few weeks probably won't help you, but if you stay with the remedy, you'll see that over time, you'll be less and less sensitive to having dairy. Gluten allergies or gluten intolerances, Bovista. This is another remedy that's not very common. And you would also not take this remedy as often. You really only need it every other day. But again, you would take it for many months. And that would be one dose every other day. Whereas the Athusa, you would take twice daily for many months. And by the way, there isn't any reason why you can't combine these remedies. So if you have sensitivities to dairy and wheat, you can take Athusa and Bovista at the same time. There's no harm in that at all. So now if you have general food intolerances that you're not exactly sure, you just have this disturbed digestion that when you eat, you just don't feel great. Now we're starting to combine remedies. We talked about lycopodium, we talked about arsenicum. Let's put them together here. And when you combine them in a 200C for the lycopodium and a 6C for the arsenicum, they work like a charm. And you can take those two together twice daily for a number of weeks, depending on how chronic your situation is, you'll see how your digestion will improve. And if you have food intolerances where you have much more of a bilious gastro issue, then you would instead take Bovista, and I'm adding in two new remedies here. We call this Ipecac. It's spelled Ipecacuana, but it's Ipecac and Mercurius both in a 6C. And the Mercurius and the Ipecac, you can both find in health food stores readily. The Bovista, again, is something that would be special order or that you'd have to search online. Now, I want to explain, I have Mercurius Sol here, which is Solubus, or Mercurius Vivus. Those are both the same remedy. But some manufacturers 
write it as mercurius solubus and some write it as mercurius vivus, but it's the same remedy. So I wanted to make sure you weren't confused when you went looking for it. So now let's go to combination protocols. And with these protocols, you would take a dose of each twice daily for best results. So here's that lycopodium and arsenicum album. And this is my first choice for probably 80% of the people that I see with digestive issues, believe it or not. These two remedies, if you look at the symptoms in both those remedies, when you combine them, it covers most digestive issues. However, I also like lycopodium with plumbum. And plumbum is if you have a lot of constipation, and it's a very hard, dry constipation. You would instead switch out the arsenicum for plumbum with the lycopodium. And this actually is a great combination for people who have been diagnosed with Crohn's disease or diverticulitis. Mercurius with chelidonium. This is for constipation that has more to do with soft stool. Or if you didn't have enough results with the lycopodium and plumbum, try mercurius with chelidonium. Let's look at some other combinations. This is my other, my second favorite after lycopodium and arsenicum album. So that other 20% that didn't quite get everything fixed with the lycopodium and arsenicum, move on to Nux vomica and chelidonium as a combination. And this is, because it means your digestive issues definitely have a liver gallbladder component to it. So now I'm combining lycopodium with a new remedy I'm introducing here, iris versicolor. And this is for those people who have suffered from acid reflux, or you've been diagnosed with what they call GERD. And you may have gastric headaches, or you may have migraines, and maybe you don't realize those migraines are coming from your liver and your digestion. And combining these two remedies will help to uproot that situation. You may have burning pain in your pancreas, you may have a lot of flatulence, some nausea, some vomiting. This would be a good combination for you. Ipecac with mercurius. See how we've switched it up here? This is for nausea, vomiting, gagging. Believe it or not, there are a number of people that have these digestive issues. If you've been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, this would also be a good combination. And then the last one here is Baratrum album with Cuprum metallicum. And this actually is for more serious situations. It's for people who've been diagnosed with Crohn's. What I've found over time is that Crohn's disease, that to me it's not really a disease, that it's almost offensive to me, that name, because Crohn's is nothing more than having your gut chemistry disturbed by pathogens. And when you start uprooting those pathogens, when you start working on parasites, and when you start looking for H. pylori and other bacterial diseases like Giardia, and you get those uprooted, um, then you start to unravel what the doctors call Crohn's disease. And then you go in with a remedy like combination like Veratrum, Album, and Cuprum Metallicum, and you can actually fix the situation rather than having to take drugs for the rest of your life to suppress your symptoms. So let's talk about charting your progress. Please keep a diary. You'll see how much farther along you'll get if you do. If you keep a diary of the remedies, the symptoms that you had, the remedies that you chose, what was the potency, how long did you take the remedy, and then along with your results. If this comes back a year later or sometime down the road, you may never remember what it was that you took to fix it in the first place. Even if you think you'll remember, trust me, you won't. 
And you want to be able to refer back to these notes also to improve your results. Because if you don't remember exactly which combination you took, but maybe this time your symptoms are a little bit different. Maybe you traveled somewhere and you picked up a parasite or a bacteria or something like that and you want to go back and start again, but maybe your symptoms are a little different than the first time. Now you'll have record of what you took before and what you could now move on to in this new situation. Also, keep track of the remedies that you dispense to friends or tell friends and family members about, even if you think you'll remember, because when you start to have results, you'll wanna tell everyone about your results, how great it was, how easy it was to fix things, and you will start telling other people. But then they're gonna come back to you six months later and they're gonna say, what was that remedy that you told me to take? Because of course they're never gonna go forward and do it the first time you tell them. <laughs> and you wanna be able to remember what it was you suggested. So we'll repeat what we started with at the beginning, what Amy was talking about, that this lesson does not, and it, and, and I'm not advocating eliminating medical intervention or that you only need homeopathic medicine or that you can self-treat at all times. If you have consistent symptoms that do not improve over time, even with remedies, make sure you seek the professional help that a qualified holistic practitioner can help you to sort out digestive issues. You do have options. You don't have to just use the medical community and pharmaceutical drugs. There are other ways to uproot your situation. So do not attempt to self-diagnose and get help when necessary. Okay, so where do you find these remedies that we're talking about today? As I mentioned, you can find them in health food stores. Most health food stores have a big, beautiful blue rack on the wall that has, depending on what size rack they buy, 50 to 100 remedies in it. So all these basic remedies you can find in health food stores, and most of them average between $7 and $8 is all you're going to pay for them. And some pharmacies also carry homeopathic racks of remedies. But my favorite place for remedies is online. And online is where you'll be able to source these Individual remedies that are difficult, like Athusa and Bovista, you'll definitely be able to find them online. You can either Google it, you can go to Amazon, or you can go to manufacturers. So, for example, I have listed here Own Labs. Own Labs is a manufacturer. They will have all of those remedies. Helios. Helios is in London. They have all those remedies. But believe it or not, it's easy enough to order from them. I usually put in an order with Helios on a Sunday night because it's Monday morning for them. Sometimes I have that remedy on Friday. That's how fast they get here. As far as homeopathic kits, if you really want to, want to get into homeopathy, I would say that a kit is the best thing to have on hand. And then you have the remedies there when you need them. First of all, the cost of the remedies go down dramatically when you buy a kit. So instead of being seven or eight dollars each, there may be three dollars each is all that they are. And different manufacturers carry different kinds of kits. There are kits for babies, for first aid, for um, animals, uh, all kinds of homeopathic kits. My favorite kits are actually the third one down on this list, Hahnemann Labs. And I like Hahnemann Labs is in the Bay Area of San Francisco, and I like their kits because the vials are full-size vials, and they don't have to be replaced very often. This picture I'm showing you here is a Helios kit, and it's a lovely small kit, but you can also see that they're small vials, so you probably only have six or eight doses in each vial. But they're great to carry with you on vacation, or to have in your vacation home, or to have in the back of your car, because there are many, many amazing emergency remedies uh, within the, the spectrum of homeopathy. And of course, everything is on Amazon. So you can find individual remedies, you can find kits, you can find all these manufacturers' kits, except for own labs on Amazon. So that's where you would find them. So Amy, I'm gonna turn this back to you. Oh, everyone, thank you so much. Uh, Elena, I can't tell you how helpful that was. And I, was, I actually put myself on mute because I was laughing so hard at certain points. Um, <laughs> like when you were, I'm, 
I, as I, I mean, I have learned so much from you over the last few months, but man, what a generous. Tell me what was so funny though. I want to know what was. Well, when you were talking about how I wouldn't want to drink with water and, uh, (laughs) And yeah, you guys have to know that poor Elena, she just cringes every time she sees whatever I'm drinking. <laughs> it wouldn't be apple cider vinegar in water, that's for sure. It wouldn't be anything in water. Let's just talk about <laughs> Oh, did I lose you there? I think you muted me by mistake, Amy. Elena, can you hear me okay? Oh, now I can. I had lost you. Oh, well, um, I'm just... What did I miss? I was just curious what you guys think about what Elena was, was presenting to all of us. There's a number of you on right now, and we do have a couple of questions that have come across, but... Uh, for those of you who, who have been listening live, or if you're watching on a replay, I want to remind you, Elena, why don't you move to the next slide? I want to remind you that this entire session and every that thing that Elena has been talking about was sponsored in this class by her publisher. Elena has come out with a book called The Alternative, Your Family's Guide to Wellness. And this book is available to anyone who would like to buy a copy, you can go to the alternativebooks.com and Elena and her publisher have created a one page place where you can see all the different places that this book is for sale. And Elena, you are offering a, a, a wonderful bonus to anyone who's interested in learning more about homeopathic, homeopathic medicine. Um, now, I know that The Alternative is a fantastic book. Uh, I, I've been absolutely amazed by how well it's been doing. But you have a, uh, an ebook um, with a, another 150 page, what you call it, yes. Alternative Continued. But what it is, it's, it's an addendum. Can you tell us a little bit about why? What is this addendum? So, well, it's, you know, it's interesting that you use the word addendum, Amy, because initially it was listed as an addendum to the original book. And the publisher kept complaining that the book was just too big, that it was too large, and it would be too intimidating to take that all out. So I did take it out, and I created it instead as a companion book and thought I would just give it away for a period of time. So that now when you buy the book inside the front cover, whether um, you'll see that there is a a link to go to, to receive a download for this free book. It's another 154 pages. And it actually has a deeper understanding of a number of topics that are in this volume one book. And there are um, explanations of little known energetic medicines that people are not familiar with. I wrote all I wrote out all the top homeopathic remedies if you want to stock a home pharmacy. I wrote out the top Chinese herbs, the use of cell salts, flower essences, and most importantly detoxification methods are all listed in this companion book. So there is a number of more resources and I also added cases So you could see case studies of how people have actually used the remedies and how the process went through reading their cases. Folks, those of you who have, who are still on and who are watching this replay and who have just, you know, been as blown away as I am by Elena's, uh, the depth of her knowledge. And this is, she's just talking about digestive issues tonight. In, In her book, The Alternative, she covers just about every issue you could possibly think of. And when she talks about not covering up the symptoms, when she talks about actually getting to the root and, and truly treating uh, what is wrong with you, she has as a number of other books out there and she is offering to anyone who goes to the alternativebooks.com. If you go to the alternativebooks.com and order the copy of The Alternatives, while you're, again, this is only a limited time offer where, while we have this replay up, She is also, in addition to a free copy of the addendum, the alternative continued, she has got books out for people who are dealing with autoimmune disease, allergies, cold, flu, cancer. And if you would like a copy of all of these books, 
Elena is offering all six of her books simply by buying The Alternative. The Alternative just came out in the last month or two. It's already won an award. It's already hitting some bestseller lists. Elena, if you move to the next slide, perhaps we can show everyone that all of these books are available simply for the price of your one book, The Alternative. Elena, how much does The Alternative cost? $24.99. $24.99, and you can buy it from a number of different sources. Please, Elena, if you go to the next slide, I would like everyone to, to go to thealternativebooks.com. I would also like you to go to elenaupton.com, one of my favorite sites. Uh, those are two sites that I highly recommend you check out. Elena, we have a couple of questions that came up. Do you have two minutes to answer a few questions? I, I absolutely do, yes. If somebody has multiple symptoms, you, you talk a lot about, about digestive issues, but if the digestive issues actually, if they've been diagnosed and, and they're finding themselves that the treatment for their digestive issue is causing other symptoms, uh, do you have do you have any experience with that? Have you ever found that somebody starts treating a digestive issue and it actually causes another issue? And and does your book or do you cover that? Well, I guess I would want a clarification on that question. Question is the treatment of the digestive issues causing problems because it's it's pharmaceutical. Because I don't know of natural remedies that cause a problem unless someone is doing a detox with them and it's not being done properly. But as far as natural medicine, um, I mean, to work on digestive issues homeopathically is usually where you start. If I have someone who comes in to me and they've been diagnosed with a number of different things and digestive issues is one of them, I always start with their digestion because your digestion is actually your first brain. It's not, some doctors have written books saying how di your stomach is your second brain. It's not, it's the first, because everything starts in your gut. If you don't have proper digestion, nothing in your body works properly. So you have to start there first. And if you start there with homeopathic remedies, it is not gonna cause problems anywhere else in your body. Trust me, I've been doing this for almost 30 years and I've never seen that. And homeopathic remedies don't cause side effects anyway. It's just not. Um, yes, that, that question was by a woman named Phyllis, and I believe, although she's, uh, in, Phyllis, feel free to ask to jump in, but I believe you were talking about more traditional medicine causing other issues if you were, I don't believe she was talking about homeopathy. Yeah, so um, I would say it's the wrong treatment. If something is causing other problems, which is the main issue with pharmaceutical drugs, is that all drugs cause a side effect, and the side effect is your body trying to get rid of it because that drug is only suppressing your symptoms in the first place. It's not working to fix your symptoms or to cure it. And homeopathy is the opposite because it acts literally uproots things and resolves them. Philip is asking if, uh, if how to get a hold of you or do you work with people? I don't believe you do. I believe that that your practice, although you you are certainly in demand, but that you are trying to uh, to get the word out through some of your services. But you do have a website besides the alternativebooks.com where people can sign up for a newsletter, correct? Yes, they can go to elenaupton.com. And you can read, I have many articles there talking about a lot of different topics. And as far as that question, do I work personally? I have a small practice at this point. I sold my clinic and I've devoted most of um, the last few years to writing and trying to get this information out in teaching. So my practice is limited at this time. So I don't really work with people over the phone or Skype or um, if people happen to come into the area, I may, but um, usually people are referred to me and it's a much smaller practice than when I had my clinic so that I can do the writing and teaching at this time. All right. Well, guys, uh, Elena has already, I mean, we're at the top of the hour. She has been very generous with her time. I, I hope you guys understand and, and, you know, go Google her, go find out. Uh, this, this woman is, is the real deal. <laughs> Elena, thank you so much for spending this hour with us. I, guys, I'm suggesting all of you go to the alternativebooks.com, order a copy of her book. Uh, the alternativebooks.com will have a link to the Elena Upton website where you can sign up for her newsletter. 
Do everything you can to get a hold of this woman's work. It's really brilliant. Elena, thank you so much. Is there anything that you'd like to end with before we, we sign off tonight? I would just like to say thank you to those who tuned in, who are really making an effort to find a way to heal themselves and to gather more information so that they're more in control of their lives and can be more discerning. So thank you to all of you for participating with me. Good.